So this is in the system with their compressor and their condensing coil. And here I've just simply removed the compressor and removed the condensing coil, but you can see all the components. Our compressor pumps out a high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor, discharge gas, hot gas. We go through a muffler and we end up in the one pipe by itself with a reversing valve. For now we can send the hot gas outside or we can send the hot gas inside. So in this case, it's summertime, we're gonna send the hot gas outside. So the hot gas comes around and it comes down through the cylinder. So this is high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor. It's going into the cylinder. We're gonna come back to the cylinder here in just a little bit, but it just passes right through the cylinder with high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor, hot gas, discharge line. From there, we continue back through. We go through a condensing coil to where we desuperheat, change it from a vapor to a liquid. Then we also subcool it. We come through our metering device, which is being bypassed like it's not even there. We flow over through our bi-flow liquid line filter dryer, through our liquid line to the indoor metering device. But there's also this extra little pipe that comes up where we have liquid refrigerant can be inside of this chamber. If this line is high temperature, high pressure superheated vapor, there's gonna be a lot of temperature and pressure building up inside of here. That liquid's gonna be at the bottom and it's gonna keep that liquid pushed out of this chamber and keep it into the liquid line. Liquid refrigerant will continue to flow to the indoor metering device, flash gas, change it from a liquid to a vapor, absorbing heat, evaporation, boiling, then we superheat it. Low temperature, low pressure superheated vapor comes back here through our suction line. It simply makes a nice little loop to a reversing valve, makes a little loop in the reversing valve through our suction line accumulator, out of the suction line accumulator, over to our compressor. We've made that complete cycle. But in the winter time, we need less refrigerant. And this is where it's gonna get beautiful. In the winter time, we're gonna send our high temperature, high pressure superheated vapor through our muffler all the way to the one port here by itself. Then in the winter time, I wanna send that hot gas to the inside. So we send the hot gas this direction. It comes all the way around, loops around, and we send that hot gas to the indoor coil where we desuperheat it, change it from a vapor to a liquid, and also subcool that liquid bypass the indoor meter device that liquid refrigerant comes all the way through here through our bi-flow filter dryer some of that liquid refrigerant can go into this chamber and the other liquid refrigerant is going to continue on to our metering device which drops the temperature and the pressure allows refrigerant to boil inside the evaporator absorbing heat from outside we superheat that vapor then we get our suction gas this is beautiful. This is our suction gas is coming from the outdoor coil and low temperature, low pressure superheated vapor is coming through this line. So it's low temperature. Low temperature is coming through this line, comes all the way back over to reversing valve. We make a little loop through our suction line accumulator from there to the suction side of the compressor. But now that it's winter time and this temperature is low temperature vapor on here, the pressure inside of here is going to be much lower. Because this pressure is lower, that extra liquid refrigerant that's coming from the indoor has a place to go. So it's going to actually travel in here and start filling up this charge compensator. So let's look at that again. In the summertime, this line is high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor, hot gas running through this tube. That heats up the cylinder, increasing the pressure inside the cylinder. So that pressure is pushing down on any liquid that's in here and that pushes that liquid out this bottom drain port that connects to our liquid line and it, it keeps the liquid refrigerant out of this component and keeps the end of the liquid line to where it's either in the condenser or traveling to our indoor metering device. In the winter time, this is now suction gas coming from outside, low temperature, low pressure superheated vapor travels through this tube. So that lower temperature, lower pressure causes a pressure drop. The excess refrigerant from the high side, especially from the indoor coil, that excess pressure comes over here and it pushes that liquid refrigerant and starts filling up this charge compensator. So that extra refrigerant we don't need in the winter time fills up inside of here. In the summertime, this line gets warm, that extra temperature and pressure pushes that liquid refrigerant into the system. In the wintertime, this low temperature, low pressure allows that high pressure liquid to be pushed into this chamber and store that extra refrigerant. Pretty simple little device, pretty easy to work with, pretty cool. And you can see we have our liquid line, our bi-flow filter dryer, Here's that T we're talking about. It continues all the way over to our metering device. This metering device will be bypassed in the summertime as refrigerant is flowing this direction. And this metering device is gonna be engaged and being used in this direction. Big thanks to JD Kelly for bringing these images to life. He brings these chicken scratch drawings of mine and really reworks them, makes them this beautiful artwork right here. Really a great talent, really glad to have him help me out. 